This is just an excerpt from a full episode. If you enjoyed what you hear here, go check out other full episodes, either on YouTube or as part of the podcast feed. Enjoy. And finally, is this art news? A Melbourne artist who is documenting the live streaming of their attempts to self-inseminate with donor sperm has had their funding rescinded by the Australia Council, which said it would not support the project that could bring new life into the world. Look, Australia Council, I know 2020 has been a downer of a year, but maybe we don't turn the faucet off on humanity just yet. Maybe give them a couple more years. It figures that this would be a Melbourne artist though, as the only state that continuously votes Greens, they are showing that they still believe in a future. And that future is multiple choice. Your choices are A. Mad Max but with Tesla cars. B. Water world where the only livable space is islands built by China. Or the Free Republic of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Or C. Doomsday Bunker Whack-A-Mole with a special guest spot by Radioactive Zombies. Whichever it is that the Greens say that they're on board with, will be there. The federal government's major arts funding and advisory body has previously approved funding for Immaculate, the name of the piece, way back in early August. And this was after being told what the project involved. That being live streaming and documenting the attempt to artificially inseminate the artist. But a week later, the council sent the artist Casey Jenkins, a transcript of a heavily critical segment on Sky News by former Tony Abbott advisor Peter Kregelin and called in lawyers. Continuing Australia's fearless approach to artistic exploration, which has previously included such large scale projects as slowly choking the life out of the arts industry live and in real time so Australians can watch the life drain out of its eyes as they complain that we never make any good music, movie or TV in this country. The mixed medium collage entitled Democracy Shrugged, mostly consisting of the, of the weekend at Bernie'sing of the emptied husks of news companies by Rupert Murdoch and the News Corp puppet show Spectacular, masquerading as free thought as the empty eyes of anchors and journalists scream that they are indeed real boys and girls while singing the company song, I've got no strings on me, and a $6.8 million cube made by an American artist. So good to see that they're keeping their investments local. Having activated the Credlin alarm, they then panicked, lest they get noticed as a continually functioning arts body in Australia and then get themselves defunded like the ABC. Don't move. Can't see us if we don't move. As such, they have cancelled the $25,000 grant in a letter to Jenkins from the Australia Council Chief Executive Adrian Collette, who told Jenkins that the ethical issues that will inevitably surround this project, possibly for years to come, are not something the council can take responsibility for. Sounding more like an articulate version of every dodgy dad in a TV show than a body of arts council fearlessly defending its own mission statement in Australia. We expect and anticipate that our artists will exercise our freedom of expression and be fearless, take risks and develop and present inspiring work across national and international borders. The letter also bravely stated through quivering lips that the project exposes the Australia Council to unacceptable, potentially long-term and incalculable risk as it cowered behind its desk pillow fort. Sounds like the Australia Council is just afraid that they are going to grow up to be responsible for this child and that maybe this child will uh, come at them for, uh, for like parenting fees in the form of a grant. The council said negative media coverage was not a factor in its decision, going on to say it mostly feared negative government coverage, having to defend a choice it made and clowns. They're just unsettling and thus will never receive Australia Council funding. Ever. Peter Credlin called the project the tip of the iceberg 
of sheer abuse of taxpayer grants, which is definitely different from the $40 million in taxpayer dollars that went to Foxtel in the past six years. Or the taxpayer money funding that Sky News program Mundane Means Business, run by former Labour Party president turned to the dark side Warren Mundane, which received approval for government funding for a second season before his application had even been sent, in a not at all suspicious use of public funds just months before it became a Liberal Party candidate. Huh, interesting. Now if you're unsure, Sky News is Fox News, if Fox News remembers to take its medication, but Sky News After Dark is its own beast, described by Sky News host Paul Murray as you can say Sky News at night is a liberal echo chamber. These revelations put me in a disappointing agreement with one Dr. Bella Diabria, director of the right-wing think tank, the Institute of Public Affairs, who has said, Australians really need to question where their money is going. And I would agree. We would need to question where our money is going or else it might go to funding outrageous projects like refugee detention centres. And that would be an atrocious violation of human rights to have your money tied to, let alone these outrageous art scandals. It's bizarre that the conservative government mouthpiece that is Sky News would be so afraid of bringing another baby into the world when normally they take a very conservative stance on stopping ladies from having babies. Jenkins, the artist, remember, even said during subsequent discussions about the funding, a senior Australia Council staff member warned, we have a very conservative Prime Minister, and fearlessly exercising your expression to take risks, in his opinion, is to fearlessly continue to invest in a coal industry despite the negative press. At least I hope his whole career has been some sort of Andy Kaufman style performance piece where his whole goal is to get people to walk out on the Liberal Party. They have misunderstood the piece and have stayed and cheered instead. This has got to be why he's so angry at the arts, right? His whole life has just been a failed artistic piece.